Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Wiki Weekends. I am your host for this episode, Lucas Holland, and I am joined by the lovely and punishing Carl Smallwood. Why would you say punishing? No, it well, sounds so bad. I say punishing because that's a little tease for what we're talking about today, Carl. And who's that? We are talking about Frank Castle. Oh, the disciplinarian. Let's go. How less intimidating would he be if his name was just the disciplinarian? It'd be very scary. Well, it's like that old Tumblr shit post about weapon naming, isn't it? Of It's one thing to give something a really scary, dangerous sounding name, like, you know, just the legendary death blade of darkness is one thing, but there's just something to be said about giving it a stupid name because no one wants to get hit by the throngler. <laughs> yeah. That's what they say. It's like, yeah, you, you, you don't want to get hit by, like, you know... Lucian's death blade of the darkness, but you certainly don't want to get hit by the throngler. No one wants to get throngled. Nobody wants to get throngled, indeed. But Frank Castle doesn't use thronglers, Carl. He, he just, would if he could. He would if he could, but he just mainly uses fucking guns. Yes, he is gunman. Uh, he is basically gunman, but, you know, obviously, before I guess we start talking about Frank Castle overall, I guess we can just, like, talk a little bit about what Frank Castle stands for and how it's been, like completely just swapped around by the public image and in particular the police i believe you know we don't like to get delve into too heavy a topic on this channel because you know we try and keep it light but mm -hmm. it is worth noting that there's a lot of police out there who fucking love the punisher to the point where you had like that school shooting last year so oh, here's a police officer scrolling his phone while not helping with the punisher as his background right and there is a punisher comic where frank castle himself is like confronts a bunch of cops of like i am the symptom of your ineptitude essentially yeah and the entire reason that frank castle needs to exist as the punisher is because his family got murdered because of you know the, it, there's obviously changes over the years to what happened but essentially a shootout between gangs and yeah. whether that was set up or not to kill frank or what have you like differences change all the time but in his eyes the first reason he became the punisher was just the cops didn't do their fucking job and stop these gangs yeah he's like my existence is a testament to your failure and the mm -hmm. fact that you idolize me is fucking horrifying because you shouldn't be idolizing me because i'm not a person to be idolized like frank castle himself even says i save one bullet from there's one bullet always saved and it's for me no matter how brutal frank castle gets he is immune to the penance there because he doesn't feel sorry about what he's done. He just feels like it's something that needs to happen. Yeah, he is a complete psychopath. And he acknowledges it as well. That's what makes him such an interesting character. Of He acknowledges that he is a terrible human being. He just doesn't care. You're not going to kill me because you're a good man. You are. You don't know shit. And it's just funny that so many people have just seen that as like, yeah, man, the punish is so right. Go the Punisher, and it's a like, no, no. The the Punisher is an extreme psychopath going to extreme ends to get shit done. It's it's the thing, yeah. We basically you look at the Punisher. What is it? it was a guy who's like absolutely psychopathic and murders people. It's like he's not so he should be looking up to. No, exactly. He is a very you know prototypical anti-hero to say the very least. He's and the most anti of anti-heroes. Yes. Yeah, he really is. He should say a lot when his antagonist for a lot of storylines can be just Daredevil trying to go through the law to get people served through the justice system. And Frank's like, nah, I just want to shoot them all. Up. In a month, a week, a day later, they're back on the streets doing the yeah. same goddamn so, thing. So you just put him in the morgue. You goddamn right I do. What's the, the, the best seat by part of like uh, Daredevil season two, isn't it? Of like, mm -hmm. um, you, when I put people down, they stay down. And it's a really difficult thing to argue against. And they did a really good job of like displaying like, the nuance. Like, it's really hard to argue with someone who has literally had their family slaughtered by crime. And you can see why he'd have such an extreme view of why should I give a shit? Why should I place my faith in the law when it failed me? And when it continues to fail others, because all of these people that you keep putting away or sometimes saving from getting in prison, they just go do more bad shit. Yeah, they don't do that when I'm around. And he's wrong. And he admits that he's wrong. But he's like, well, mm -hmm. what other solution is there? 
come up with a better one and I'll stop doing it. He is not in the right, but neither is the way that the current like law and prison system works. Especially when it's based around, you know, his campus of Hell's fucking Kitchen where everything is corrupt as shit. As I mentioned, he just doesn't give a shit. That was a great moment in Punish Season 2. Where he's like rescuing that girl and she shoots someone in the gut. Mm -hmm. And she's like panicking. He's like, oh no, I killed that guy. And Frank's like, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, watch. And he shoots him and goes, look, I killed him. <laughs> because he doesn't care. He's like, you know what? I, it, it won't weigh on my conscience to kill a criminal. It will ruin your entire life. I'll just murder him and move on. Yeah. And he acknowledges, like, you know, that's not a healthy mindset to have. But it's like almost like Dexter, yeah. isn't it? Of like, but I'm going to aim it in a direction that I, in my warped view of reality, helps quote unquote people. The exact point of Dexter is like, I am a serial killer and I am a monster. He calls himself a monster all of the time. Oh, yeah but he is going to use a code so that he can exist in a monster in what feels like a justified way. Killing will serve a purpose, otherwise it's just plain murder. It's not about vengeance. It's not about retaliation. Yeah, he's going to create a version of reality that allows him to justify his own existence, because... Mm -hmm. Same with that Punisher. Like, you know, his justification is of like, people always say, like, you're a murderer too. He's like, I know. The thing is, though, I'll admit it. And that's what he always says in the comics. Of like, at least I'll admit it. And the only people I kill are people who stop, who also kill. And I do wonder what his quote is from himself here. Let's have a go. It's quite a lengthy one. They laugh at the law, the rich ones who buy it and twist it to their whims. The other ones who have nothing to lose, who don't care about themselves or other people, all the ones who think they're above the law or outside it or beyond it. They know all the law is good for is to keep people in line, and they all laugh. They laugh at the law, but they don't laugh at me. The Punisher is such a fascinating character. Of You can absolutely 100% see where he's coming from. I think that's what makes it such a weird character to discuss as well, because yeah, like, I can understand where he comes from. I can understand his reasoning, but I can't root for him. That's the problem, but then people do. It's that extra yeah. step of saying, but no, he's right. It's like, He's a, he's a symptom of like how broken the universe is. Exactly, and I can understand why someone would be pushed to that level when, yeah, especially in a comic book version of New York where this Hell's Kitchen especially is just, well, everybody who has money is above the law completely and they laugh at the law. Yeah. I have to go to extreme methods to try and, like, fix it in my own twisted sense of justice, but it doesn't make it justified in general. Yeah, and I can also see as well why people find it cathartic. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we all like watching films where the bad guy gets his comeuppance, and in exactly. a lot of the time, the bad guys of reality don't get their comeuppance. So I can see why, you know, it's cathartic to consume media involving the Punisher or characters of his ilk. Like, you watch Dexter, it's like satisfying to see people get what you feel that they deserve. Mm -hmm. So again, I can understand it, but it, there's always yeah. that extra step of when people start actively celebrating it. It's one mm -hmm. thing to... Under, you know what I mean? Hopefully people yeah, out there when, know what we mean. When people say that extra step of, man, I wish I could be the Punisher, rather than I wish I could be a, a Spider-Man or a more wholesome hero. It's, no, you shouldn't aspire to be the, the Frank Castle murderous vigilante. Maybe you should aspire to be somebody that's wanting to fix the world. Yeah, or you'll watch The Punisher and go, oh, that's a pretty cool action scene, this is fun. There's that extra step of going, man, I wish we need someone like this in real life. Mm -hmm. The text is very clear in that this is the most extreme solution to this issue. Exactly, yeah, but let's get into some details about Frank himself. Yes, tell me more about um, uh, the disciplinarian. Lieutenant Francis Frank Castle, born Francis Castiglione, yes. aka The Punisher, was an Italian-American former U.S. Marine who served in multiple tours of duty. And you said he changed his name to Frank Castle to just re-enlist? Yeah, so he's born Francis Castiglione, um, Italian-American, mm. and he changed his name to Frank Castle, anglicizes it so he can re-enlist because he just <laughs> fucking loves murder. He loves vi He craves violence. Which, again, just a hint that he's... He, maybe he's not all there mentally, and he understands that. I love hurting people. I'm mm -hmm. really, really good at it. Where would that energy be best utilised? In the military. You know, that's the one place where I guess, like, his efforts of murdering people should be celebrated, where he earned, like, you know, uh, bronze, silver, and four, poor, and four purple hearts in the Shang Kong War. Yeah, that's like, you know, we've made up his stand in Marvel. Like, cause we want to put him in a war, but we don't want to put him in a real-life conflict, because that's kind of crass. Right, okay, I was wondering, I was like, I'm not overly familiar with that, but yeah, maybe that was just a, a blank spot, but... Okay, that's just a marvelified war. Yeah, okay, it, got it, it used to be that he was a veteran of the uh, Vietnam War, 
mm. and then with the marble sliding time scale it became like more and more unbelievable because like by that point frank had been like 60 70 years old so they f- slid it forward to be desert storm and then they realized maybe we shouldn't have just say he's fought in real wars because that's a bit crass make mm-hmm. up a conflict Sian Khan. right yeah he became a vigilante after seeing his wife maria and children lisa and frank jr gunned down for accidentally observing a mafia hit now with a distinct death's head skull adorning his chest, he devoted his life to the task of destroying organised crime wherever he found it, most of the time in fucking New York. There's probably a lot of crime. And again, like you know, it's very cathartic. I, I love like, you know, John Wick. It's a fantastic action movie. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's really satisfying that John Wick can shoot a lot of people and you don't have to feel bad because all the people are either hired criminals or deserve it by like doing things like kill his dog or his wife not his wife mm. like you know the kill his dog bought by his wife there is a there is like you know a cathartic element to that and the fact that frank castle's targets are very often the worst elements of humanity make for very satisfying cathartic reading sometimes yeah because when he's coming after like people like the kingpin who just are inarguably completely corrupt and also just ruin the law in New York. Like, he basically just runs New York from behind a desk because he's that powerful. Yeah, it's really interesting and cathartic, as you say, to just see the Punisher beat the shit out of him. But I also think, like, the Punisher's useful as, like, you know, a tool in other stories. Like I said, when he's in Daredevil, I much prefer him in the Daredevil show than he is in his own show. Mm -hmm. Because I like the idea of Daredevil having to come to terms with the fact that, how do I argue against this? Because he does have a point of when Frank Castle shoots people, they don't commit crimes anymore. You hit them and they get back up. I hit them and they stay down. It's permanent. I make sure that they don't make it out on the street again. I take pride in that. Something we've talked about before is the fact that very often... A lot of like comic shows and movies rarely want to engage with these conversations because they're difficult and there's nuance to them. They generally mm-hmm. want them to be a good guy and a bad guy. That's why Frank Castle's an interesting character because he is a bad guy. It's a really interesting conversation to have, but imagine just, okay, Frank has a very stern sense of justice and goes after people that in the comic books generally are pretty black and white, just evil characters. Yes. However, if you translate people being the Punisher into real life, where every single person has a very different idea of what should be considered a bad person... Well, that's the problem, yeah. It's like the the Punisher has a perfect sense of morality and he's never wrong because he's a comic character. Almost never wrong, I'm sure. And there's like there's a joke that I think it's like there's a that the Punisher has a superpower no one knows about where just he alters reality to always make people guilty of a crime <laughs> because he seemingly has like you know just clairvoyance that everyone he punishes is guilty of what he's punishing them for. Well, I mean, we'll get on to the powers and abilities at yeah. some point. That did happen, but yeah, it's just one of those things where at all times he seems to have that ability to just. Oh no, I know that these people are evil. Trust me, like they yeah. definitely are. And because he's the Punisher, you. You, you believe it. It's like Batman, isn't it? Like when Batman mm-hmm. beats someone up and leaves them for dead in an alleyway. Which is always weird to me that Batman specifically beats people up in alleyways. He doesn't so you, kill Carl. Yeah, and it's like, but Batman knows. Of course, they're, you know, they're guilty of the crime. Batman always knows. Mm-hmm. There is never like a false positive in comic books, or there rarely is. Whereas in reality, it happens all the fucking time. Yeah, I mean, even looking at the justice system is not perfect either. Of like, People are wrongly committed to prison for crimes they never actually did quite often and it's still happening to this day the same happens with people's morality systems of imagine every person having the abilities and weaponry that the punisher does and deciding that they are justified in killing anyone they think is a bad person it, like we'd all be dead very quickly what's well, that's, uh, that's the whole point because punisher's um, sense of justice is based on the eye for an eye which is mm-hmm. the the full quote for which is what lucas an eye for an eye Makes the whole world blind. Yeah, so I think there's a quote from one of the Punisher writers that says, oh, Punisher's sense of justice is eye for an eye. That kind of justice does not help anyone in the long term. It just makes the world worse overall. So that's exactly, thing. Like, yeah. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. If we just go off, like, killing everybody in revenge all of the time, everyone will be dead very quickly. Yeah, because everyone's sense of personal morality and justice is different. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a very interesting conversation to have and one we could have for a long, long time. But I guess let us know in the comments like what you think of just a Punisher-filled world would be like. It'd be terrifying. It would be terrifying. 
What makes it fascinating though is like, you know, we can have this nuanced discussion, but it's always weird to see online of like, everyone's like, well, no, are you saying that you should just let murderers off? It's like, we're not saying that, no. We're saying think about it more than just black and white. Because that's how the Punisher looks at it. And the people who write his stories say he's wrong. Again, yeah, when the Punisher murders people, he murders people for being yeah, serial killers and murderers and massive crime bosses and shit like this. Sometimes it's just because they're doing shit that annoys him. Sometimes it can be lower level thugs as well, yeah. Um, lower level crimes and shit. But imagine in a real world scenario where someone's just like, well, that guy like broke a window in my house. I'm going to go kill him for being like committing crimes. That's Look, a crime, that right? That's thing that happens in real life, yeah. No, but imagine that's completely justified and everybody gets away with it and everybody's doing it. Yeah. That's a terrifying concept. That's what makes the punch such an interesting character because he's like, he's written to be a deliberate teardown of that line of thinking and then people just read it completely seriously and see it mm. as an endorsement of it rather than like a, just a vicious condemnation. Are you saying, Carl, that on Wiki Weekends, once again, we are seeing that media literacy is not always there? It is not now. And I can see why with the punish though, because like I said, he's, the people he kills are always, they're always guilty. And he's often portrayed as being a very cool character. Yes. Even though he's really not. If you actually read his stories, he's fucking miserable. Yeah, he is very miserable, but the the actions that he takes are cool. Like, oh, look at this scene where like, the Punisher beats down a load of people or shotguns everyone. Just your whole bill. And it could be cathartic to watch that. It can be. But Carl, we're moving on to just the aliases and codenames and band names of one Frank Castle. And there are a lot. What's the weird thing about like the Punisher though? That he doesn't really have an alias. He doesn't have an alter ego because everyone knows who he is. Yeah, he's just Frank Castle, the fucking Punisher. And one of my favourite jokes is that like, wait, he walks around with his like real name. Why don't criminals just get their own back on him? So like, what are they going to do? Kill his family? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've already did that and it the didn't work the only thing that they can do to get to him they've already done by accident and it didn't work it just made him worse they created the Punisher that's what, that's what I like about that like, he just tells people his real name because it's like what the fuck are they going to do they, they know my name and they know where I am but my house is just full of hand grenades and landmines. Good luck finding me, but if you do, what do you expect? I'm the fucking Punisher. The only, like, friends and associates he's got are all fucking superheroes. Yep. Uh, but his code names here are Punisher or Captain America, of course, like... He was the Captain yeah. America for a little bit, which people really didn't like, because it's like, he shoots people! The Captain America with just a big skull on his chest. I'd argue that's a more realistic Captain America. Like, Captain yeah. America is how, Cap is how America sees itself. Punisher Captain America is how the rest of the world sees America. <laughs> it is. Um, and one editorial name here is Franken Castle. Yeah. Which we'll get to in some former powers that I'm going to talk about. It's They wanted to just reset the age, so they just made him a zombie for a little bit, and then he came back, and he was young again. Yay! Yay! Comic book bullshit! <laughs> uh, nicknames, we've got Big Boy, Fank of Earth, Frankie, Frankie Boy, Skull Chest, Meat Shell, Skull Face Guy, Ted Bishop, and Laughing Boy. I was going to say, like, who's calling him? Like, I guess like, people would take the piss out of him a little bit. They try to make uh, fun of him. Punisher meets Archie. Oh, yeah, he did meet Archie for a little from. bit. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, he went to the Archie comics for a little bit because there's a criminal who looks like Archie, and the Punisher rocks up and just starts shooting up Riverdale. <laughs> That's a real thing that happened, yeah. Because I was like, oh, maybe, like... You know, someone like Deadpool is probably just calling him that or something. It's like, no, he just went to go murder Archie one day. And then other aliases, uh, Big Nothing, Big Shoulders, Charles Fort, Cliff Calador, Francis Stronghold, Frank Hutt, Frank Root, Fist of the Beast. I, I like can that see one. that, yeah. I can see it. Uh, Frank Tower, Frankie Villa, Fred D'Amato. High Slayer of the Hand. Fuck yeah. At some point you just joined the hand and became a High Slayer. It'd be really easy, wouldn't it? You can just probably hire him if you give him enough money. Yeah, right, true. Uh, James Maxwell, John Conway, John Smith, Johnny Tower, Little Hunter, Mr. Shalliner, Mr. Herschel, Schlo Mr. Hirschloss, Mr. Man, Mr. Smith, Mr. Villa, Murder Messiah. Yeah, I can see it. I'll buy their album. Murder Messiah. L let's go. Uh, Prisoner 616 Sad Princess 14 Okay, that one's amazing Because that's where Frank <laughs> goes online And pretends to be a 14-year-old girl And then like, just... Chris, Chris Hansen's it And just shoots paedophiles 
<laughs> and at that point, that is entrapment, right? That's the <laughs> definition great, of entrapment. Yeah. But again, it's really hard to feel sorry for his victims because his victim is a child molester. Yep. Like, that's, that's what incredible. makes him like such a like it's a fascinating character to talk about because okay, it's really, really hard to have sympathy for that mm-hmm. criminal. But yep. also, that is entrapment. It, it's real entrapment and real fucked up. But at the same time, I don't really feel sorry for exactly just the nonce coming in. Yeah. Well, that's what I, it reminds me of. A, it's a it's an interview with someone who teaches like you know, psychiatry, mm-hmm. and they say one of the first questions we have to ask is: Let's say someone comes into your office right now, and they talk to you, and they tell you that they're having thoughts about abusing children. What would you do in that situation? And everyone's like, call the police. Like, but they've mm. not acted on it yet. It's not a crime to have those thoughts, and their act of coming to see you is a cry for help. Mm-hmm. And if you don't help them, what does that say? What's that going to do? It's like, well, they're going to leave and then feel like they're going to, who else are they going to go to? You have to have sympathy for the worst kind of people. And that's a very mm. difficult thing to do. Almost impossible, in fact. And a lot of people yes. would like scoff at the idea of having sympathy for someone in that situation, but it's like, What's the alternative? Yeah, right. Drive them to worse people that yes. will encourage the behavior. Yeah. And like, that's the thing is, that's why I could never do a job like that because I, just that kind of conundrum would be very hard to deal with. Yeah. And I, I found that fascinating. It's like, it would be difficult to have like sympathy someone in that situation. But, and the way they explain it is, but if you don't, as you said, you'll drive them to other people who'd, who are worse. Mm-hmm. And the act of, you know, shunning them would potentially put a child more at risk. Yeah, like you could potentially just push them down that rabbit hole. But also as well, that's a really difficult conversation to have, an almost impossible one to have, in fact. Yeah. Because if you try to have that conversation almost anywhere, like there'll be people who hear us say that and be really mad that we're even talking about it. Like, why would mm. you have any sympathy for that kind of person? It's like, I understand. It's difficult as to a, do that. Like, as a person, you wouldn't. But as you say, like, as someone like maybe a psychiatrist or something, someone who's meant to be like... Uh, a trusted person of position, yeah, you've got to deal with that in a different and more professional and yeah, like, it, but it's, it's so hard to even say it and justify like the conversation. Yeah. It's like lawyers, isn't it? Of like, how do you be a lawyer for someone who's committed a horrific crime? It's like, well, everyone under the law is entitled to fair yeah. representation. It's like, yeah, but how can you represent a murderer? It's well, like, it's like s- someone's got to, they've still got human rights and one side of the conversation has got to be the representation for this person, even if they are a scumbag. And it's the moment you start stripping away their rights, then it's like the slippery slope, isn't it? Of like, who else doesn't deserve rights? Exactly, yeah. And you don't want that to be the conversation. And it's it's fascinating. It's difficult, and you can see why someone who's like as mentally warped as the Punisher sees that. And I don't want to have a conversation about it. I just want to shoot them all. This is why, you know, a lot of people shouldn't be put in positions of either having a gun or being a psychiatrist or lawyer or something because I, I couldn't deal with that kind of shit. No, that, that, I found that fascinating when I saw that breakdown. It's like, my, you, obviously your first reaction is visceral. Like, why would I want to talk to, or why would I help them? It's like, because they're asking you for help. Mm-hmm. You're that last line of defense almost. You, Yeah, you could be. Yeah. And you need to believe in your heart of hearts that people can be truly rehabilitated because if you don't, you can't be a psychiatrist because you believe like you. Then it's, it's the exact same thing of like to a less you know extreme sense is just talking about like convicts and prisoners in general. It's like yeah. well, the whole point of prison is meant to be it's a rehabilitation center so that when those people are released and you tr- still treat them like convicts, that entirely defeats the point of it being rehabilitation. People always draw comparisons to like the Scandinavian countries where you'll see pictures of like, this is a prison in Finland. And it where looks they're like treated an... like human beings. And everyone's like, that's stupid. Why would you treat criminals like that? It's because they, then they don't, they, they don't commit crimes again. The recidivism mm-hmm. rate of like Scandinavian countries is like a fraction of what it is in America. Because they, because treat... they actually treat people how to become regular members of society and treat them that way with exceptions like you know for obviously horrific crimes and Mm -hmm. well that's a difficult conversation to have isn't it when you say we should treat prisoners like people you basically say that gets framed as what so you want murderers to be comfortable it's like well i want people to be comfortable and unfortunately that includes murderers Mm -hmm. and it's again it's difficult to have that conversation and it all it's because it almost always gets thrown back in your face and then but when you see the results of like countries like those Scandinavian countries where their recidivism rates are through like on the floor, 
They just don't. It just doesn't happen. I will use UK and US prisons as examples because I've seen more of those talked about on you know TV and in media and stuff. Where a lot of the time you'll see interviews with people and say, "Well, I got outside. I didn't really know how to live in the real world." And I also got treated like a piece of shit for anyone that found out that I was an ex-convict. So, if anything, it was better to just go back to the life I knew. Because it's the only one that would welcome me. It's like that's it's an extension of that conversation we had earlier of if you don't make an effort to welcome those people back into society, or at least like you know, offer them a path mm -hmm. to like, you know, become a functional member of society, what is their option? This is why the Punisher works in a comic book world where everything is super exaggerated and they write criminals to be coming out of prison still wanting to commit crimes. And caricatures were... and cartoon characters. Exactly. They're super exaggerated caricatures, cartoons, comics. And like that's the whole point is that they are unredeemable because they live their life for crime because they are a one-dimensional written character that's just meant to act as a justifiable thing for Frank to kill. Yeah, they are, they're basically like, you know, stormtroopers. They're created explicitly to be an antagonistic force you don't feel bad about dying en masse. That is why Frank Castle is also known as the last one here of just Scourge of the Underworld. It works way more in like this, this comic book setting where it's written to work. Or like, you know, a, um, a high concept, like, you know, Dexter or something like John Wick. It makes for fascinating entertainment. We'll go here to his personality where we've got one little tiny paragraph somehow on personality, but Frank Castle is a vigilante slash anti-hero who employs murder. It's like, yeah, that's all you need to say, but he employs murder, kidnapping, extortion, coercion, threats of intense violence and torture in his battle against crime. His brutal nature and willingness to kill has made him one of the most dangerous men alive. He has a single solitary goal, and it is killing criminals. Or threatening to kill criminals, <laughs> yeah. That's, he's a fascinating character, because... He yeah. really is. Yeah, he's one of the most interesting characters like to discuss, I think. Just in terms of, oh, well, he's just man that shoots crime. Is it? No. It's like there's such an interesting talk about like the way he employs himself and the way he justifies himself as well. It's very interesting. But we'll move on to powers and abilities. Powers, quote unquote, he's just a dude with some guns. I'm like, pretty sure like, yeah, the Punisher, though, is the absolute peak of what a human being can be in Marvel because all he does is train. Nick Fury's Intel classified as being power level six or greater due to his fighting skills, his weaponry, and his use of lethal force. And yeah, hit on the power grid here, it goes one to seven. Seven being godlike, literal gods like, and his fighting skills were a six. Fighting skills is one thing. It's like, oh, I'm really good at fighting people. It's really hard to fight against someone just shooting you from a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing as well, like, because Frank Castle, it's one thing like, you know, Daredevil's really good at fighting, but Daredevil won't just kill you. Like, Daredevil yeah, is fighting to incapacitate you. The Punisher is fighting to kill you. Like, Spider-Man could kill you if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to. Same with most heroes in Marvel. Whereas the anti-hero, Frank Castle, he will just come in and kill you from a mile away before you know he's even there. Like he'll just put a landmine <laughs> on your front door. Care. He'll just post it through your letterbox. And I think that's another thing that's interesting about Frank is that he has a sense of justice, but he doesn't necessarily have a sense of honour of fighting. He will well, just kill you. Yeah, that's the thing. I, well, why would I show mercy to those who are merciless? I'm not going to make sure that we have this honourable duel where we're both on equal grounds and have equal weaponry and chance to fight. It's, no, I will just snipe you. Yeah, I'll use like subterfuge and everything in my disposal to um, put my thumb on the scale. But mm -hmm. his sense of honour is a really fascinating thing because he's a former soldier. Like Captain America, for example, like when he joins, I think, Civil War. Captain America's like, like, fuck, I'm fighting with this guy. He's a monster. He murders people for a living. That's all he does. And he beats the shit out of Frank Castle, who refuses to throw a punch back because he, re he respects Captain America too much. Just, yeah, the rest of his power grid here is like intelligence and strength of a three, speed and durability of a two, energy projection of a one because he's just a human. Unless he's got he an is... energy projecting gun. Yeah, the, the guns are the energy projectors of that sense, in that sense. But yeah, it's like he is extremely fast and durable for a human even stronger and more intelligent like a three when you think of it is nothing to sniff at he's nearly halfway up the power grid yep. and he's just a guy he's got no super 
ability he is. He's he's literally not a superhero. He is a man with weapons, and it's just yeah. He is nearly halfway up the power grid in both strength and intelligence. What's well, the worst? It's like yo, I'd be more scared of him coming through than Spider Man, because Spider Man's not going to kill you. And that's the thing. <laughs> Spider Man won't. He will. Spider Man's going to web you up. Yeah. Frank Castle is going to kill you before you even knew that Frank Castle was after you. And if you do something particularly heinous, he's going to kill you. It's going to really fucking hurt. And I don't normally talk through these, Carl, but we do have former powers. Yeah, because like, he was a zombie for a little bit, right? Yeah, so it is a little bit interesting. Of like, Most of it's just like, oh, he got really super-powered. It's like, while he was Frank in Castle, Castle had superhuman strength to an unknown degree. He was immune to um, telepathic mind control from... Lady Gorgon and uh, Dakin's, Dakin's pheromones. He also like joined the hand, which gave him the five gifts of the fist, which gave him a bunch of shit. He basically got some of the talismans from Jackie Chan Adventures there. And then there's all the what-if comic book where he gets the um, the Venom symbiote, and it's terrifying. Because the Venom symbiote's like, oh, you kill people, I eat brains, let's go. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Just don't shoot them in the head, please. Yeah, and like the Venom symbiote is like, I fucking love this. <laughs> that would be just a terrifying combo, yeah. There's also as well, like, one of the one of the better what if comics is what if the Punisher kills the Marvel Universe? And that's where his wife and child are killed, not by a mafia hit gone wrong. It's the X-Men. Oh, a, no. The X-Men are, like, fighting a villain and they accidentally kill his family. And it's crossfire. great because yeah. you have like um, Cyclops try and apologize, and Frank Castle just shoots him in the head, just right away. <laughs> That's the thing you just don't get a moment with Frank Castle. Well, it's, what, it's really interesting to see what the villain, what what Marvel characters are trying to do against someone who's like straight up, like, I'm just going to kill you. I'm not going to monologue. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to yep. like capture you and put you on like a a James Bond <laughs> contraption. I'm just going to. It's like. <laughs> yeah, Cyclops is great, but what would he do if someone walked up and shot him in the head? Before he even had a chance to reason with them or anything, yeah. yeah. It's like, as well, he gets, like, the Hulk. He just puts him to sleep and flamethrowers him while he's asleep. <laughs> oh, God. So he just doesn't give a fuck. But, yeah, one thing I did think that was funny in the former powers were... Yes. Most of the time they just make him, them overpowered and have every power ever, which is just boring. Frank Castle was given um, access to a hammer space portal to heaven which he typically used to produce special firearms, the strength of which responded to the wielder's thoughts that lacked drawbacks of conventional weaponry, and which were capable of killing both mundane and paranormal threats. These powers were removed when Frank wouldn't work for Heaven and the Angels, but just Heaven gave him the power to just summon whatever fucking weaponry he wanted at any point. Yeah, and it's like, oh, it's, um, its strength is directly proportional to how much, like, you know, you are focused in that moment, and these never not focused. <laughs> It's just the idea. How do you make the Punisher way more threatening? It's okay, you can give him like clairvoyance and super strength and flight and all this bollocks that you give everyone else. What's the most terrifying thing you can give Frank? Access to super weapons whenever he fucking wants it. Yeah, but it's far more fascinating, like I said, when he's just a guy. He's just a guy who fucking hates crime. And there's like, it's really difficult to actually stop it, like I said. Criminals don't actually know what to do because he has no, we know who he is. We know what he looks like. He walks around with his face out. The problem is, is that anyone who ever sees him, he just shoots them on sight. As I mentioned with, like, the Cyclops thing, you don't give him a second to reason with you. Like, nothing happens in that. There's no conversation to be had with Frank Castle. He just kills you. And then even when you get the Ghost Rider that can't be killed by him, presumably, or at least, you know, struggle to be killed by the Punisher, yeah. he just grabs him and does the penance stare, which, if people aren't aware, it's just... I am going to essentially torture you through all of the things that you regret in your life. And he just doesn't work on Frank Castle because he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care now, yeah. So the penance state makes you suffer all the sins that you've committed, but you have to feel bad about them in some way, and just Frank doesn't. That's like, the thing, he feels justified in everything he's ever done. That doesn't say he's right, it's that he thinks he's right. And that, again, that's yes. what makes him fascinating as a character. Of, yeah, he's, you know, he thinks he's right. His own sense of morality tells him that he should never regret anything he's done. As you say, it's not that he is correct in doing those things, it's that he thinks he's correct. And that's even more terrifying as a character, right? Yeah, you, because you think, like, maybe on some level there's, like, some element of his humanity left. It's like, there's nothing left. There's only the mm. Punisher. Frank Castle does not <laughs> exist anymore. And I think they even say that, I think, in one comic, his wife comes back. Like, they, like the, hang, the hand brings his wife back to life. And, mm. like, Frank Castle's like, oh, honey, look what I did for you. And his wife's horrified and she runs away. Because she's like, you're yeah. not my husband. You, you are not my husband. 
and everything you've done in my name is monstrous. I want nothing to do with you. Okay, yeah, you're using our deaths as justification, but you are not the man that I loved or married. It's similar to, like, you know, Breaking Bad, isn't it? Where, like, yeah. you know, Brian Cranston, like, no, I'm doing it because I want to save my family. And then it gets to the point where he admits, no, I'm doing it for me. Yeah. Same thing with the Punisher. Of a lot of his comics established that he just likes killing people. Like I said, he, he, re- he re-enlisted in the army to kill more people because he loves fighting that much. And yes, he did retire to his family and start enjoying that aspect of his life but the moment that got torn away from him and he had the justification to go back in to his it. head to just become a murderer again he's like great let's go and he's got like you know just the perfect inbuilt moral justification at all times of they killed my wife which again doesn't justify killing everybody he wants to kill but it does to him it's great it's a fascinating character to talk about i'm glad that we could have it this really conversation is. and i hope that the people in the comments also Want to see the nuance of this? Well, one of these last bits of trivia I'm going to cover may change that in the comments, but we'll see. The Punisher was based on the fictional vigilante Mac Bolan, the protagonist of Don Pendleton's The Executioner novel series that began in 1969. Yeah, the disciplinarian. That sounds about right, that he's based off a guy called The Executioner. (laughs) That's like a lot of comic characters, isn't it? Like, oh. Batman's just like the shadow. Decades before the Punisher commanded the War Machine armor in Punisher Volume 2, and even a few years be- before the creation of the War Machine armor itself, Dwayne McDuffie and John Rosen wrote the pitch for a prestige format miniseries called Killing Machine, in which Castle steals a guardsman armor and customizes it, painting it black with a skull insignia on the chest plate, mounting a Gatling gun on one soldier and a retractable missile launcher on the other. Does that sound like anybody? The Punisher does get an Iron Man armor in one comic button. It's like, why would you do this? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's just essentially like a guardsman armor. I'm not sure what that is, but if he became War Machine, which he did at one point in one volume, that's terrifying. It's what You've made the Punisher bulletproof. <laughs> what, like the one thing that you've got is like maybe you could hit him with a stray bullet or something now he's bulletproof and he's got a minigun yeah maybe you can get a few stray hits on him while he murders everybody nope not anymore now he's just got a minigun on his shoulder police and the US army had used the Punisher's logo as a sign of force against criminals however the Punisher's co-creator and Marvel themselves have taken legal action against the misuse of the character's logo as the character has nothing to do with law enforcement in Punisher Volume 12, Punisher himself berates some police officers for using his logo. As yes. you mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's just he says, like, I am a sim- I am a symbol of everything wrong you've done. Because like it's the thing of the police are like, yeah, you get the criminals that we can't. Like we really like that we like that you punish the criminals that we can't arrest. Or you like, you know, you beat people up when we have to follow like rules and procedure. And the Punisher's like, you fucking idiots. If you did your job, I wouldn't be here. Exactly. If it weren't for your ineptitude, I would not need to even fucking exist. Also, like he himself admits that there's something wrong with me deep inside. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be admiring me. I am a broken human being. I think it's like I think it's like Last Man Standing. I think the arc is where it's like the Punisher in the future. There's like a nuclear war, and mm. it's just like the Punisher roaming the remnants of uh, what's left of the world, just shooting the last few people alive. Oh God! Because <laughs> like. And I think what he does, he goes to like, he finds a bunch of rich people who are hiding in a bunker underground. And they say like, oh, well, you know, we're the last people alive. You can't kill us or you'll kill humanity. And Frank's like, maybe humanity doesn't deserve to live. And just shoots them all and then walks out and just like dies of exposure. He does have a pretty good point. And that kind of makes me think, Carl. Yes. Can you think of anybody that you would think in like a battle royale scenario in the sense of just like you're dropped on an island all told to like be the last one standing and giving nothing do you think that there's like anybody you can really think of that would just have a better chance of winning than the punisher would if they've not got superpowers probably not now you know maybe take like the ridiculously superpowered ones out like superman could obviously like superman just needs to exist but as you say someone like cyclops what's he gonna do when the punisher's willing to just kill him yeah it's like people probably say batman but again what's batman gonna do because the punisher will just shoot him well batman has one rule and it's to not kill and he's in a battle royale to murder everyone and punisher's got an, one rule and it's to kill everyone <laughs> He's a fascinating character. He really is. And I can't imagine if it was Batman and the Punisher in a battle royale of, say, 100 people. It would probably be that Batman just, you know, tactically hid it out for the other 98 people to die by the Punisher's hand, presumably. And just, but then what does he do against the Punisher when the Punisher's just going to kill him and Batman won't? Well, that's the thing. He's got, you've, Batman's got to have committed a crime. Because otherwise his Punisher sense won't work. Is the Punisher sense just that 
I feel justified in being the last man standing so that I can get off this island and stop more crime. <laughs> Well, that's the, he just hates crime so much. <laughs> that's the, yeah, if Batman didn't commit a crime, but Batman can't kill, who wins in that fight? Who ends up dead? He's weird though, because like, obviously he's such a brutal character in the story, he often tells, uh, he's, he's featured in really dark. There are some mm -hmm. like weird moments of humour, like Joey's name is like Frank um, Castiglione. Mm -hmm. Like one of the primary threats of his like stories is the, um, the Gnucci crime family, Italian-Americans. And there's one comic right. where one says, why are you killing us? Aren't you Italian American? He's like, I don't care. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, let us know in the comments what your favourite punishment moment is or who you think might be able to beat him in a battle royale scenario other than someone who's got ridiculous levels it's of zoo. He's got to be where he fights that polar bear, right? Does he fight a polar bear? Yeah, there's a comic where he goes into the zoo and he's getting chased through the zoo by like some criminals. It's the Gnucci crime family, actually. And he mm. finds a polar bear. He's like, okay, this polar bear can help me, but it's not angry. I know. And he just socks it on the fucking jaw and runs away. <laughs> and the polar bear gets really mad and just mauls a bunch of people. Fucking and hell. That's where you get the comic panel of the Punisher beating up a polar bear. That's some Far Cry tactics where you just lure all of the dangerous animals into the camp for you. Well, that's the one, yeah. It's like you might think, oh, he's really good at using guns, but he once tactically used a polar bear to kill someone. <laughs> And maybe that's just the title of this video. Or the Punisher, just the, that time the Punisher, the Punisher used tactically a used a polar bear to kill people. Oh dear, oh dear, but anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a whole like, subscribe, ring that bell, all that jazz. Do all those lovely things so that we can hopefully continue making the lovely content that you enjoy. Yes. Thank you all for watching. This one's not getting copyright. This one's not getting monetized. <laughs> the amount of like topics like murder and death and uh, sexual exploitation and and tactical polar bears. It's the one. It's gonna be great. Oh, thank you, everyone. Cheers, everyone.